Hey, Nancy, how are you doing? I'm just waiting on Tanya to get here. I think we're having a internet problem here in Houston. <laughs> Let me see if she got my message. So I'm hoping we'll be even able to do it. Ah, there she is. Hey, Tanya, let me bring you on. How are you doing? Oh, you're muted. I'm coming in to see is having a failure to start my video cam. I know, I had a hard time too. I even got booted once already. There you are. Well, there's your picture. Let's see. See your picture. Can I filter our video camera? Please select another video camera. I'm telling you. All right. <laughs> That's what I was just telling Nancy here is, Houston, we have a problem. The internet doesn't work. It's exciting. Huh? Yeah. Let me see if I can go off of my laptop camera. I can try and boot it up. Let me see. Okay. Hmm. Showing the camera is working, but I don't see me. I don't see you either. Looks like you're frozen. <laughs> you should hear yourself. You sound like a squeaky little mouse. One second. Oh, and I froze you again. You sound like a little squeaky mouse. <laughs> oh.
I don't know if it's gonna work. So I, it's like, are we still doing this or what? I'm kind of like, damn, I'm like, what's up? I don't know. I'm like, Nancy, what the hell is going on? Nancy, <laughs> you sounded like Minnie Mouse. I still sound like Minnie Mouse? No, not anymore, but a while ago you did. <laughs> Oh. Oh yeah, I was asking. Okay, am I showing good now? Uh, you're a little kind of like not. Yeah, sometimes you. <laughs> I can see you too, and I'm showing popcorn. Well, they can hear us now, right? I think so. Can you hear us? Huh? I know I had too much sugar today. Maybe we need to give some to Xfinity. I think they're taking a shit. Nap. Xfinity ain't getting nothing from me but a goddamn hex. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if we can do that. That's why my shit because I be talking about hexing them every time I go security, security. Right. And then have that man come standing over, stand by me like I'm a little five year old. What the hell am I doing in Xfinity? Go to jail for literally. Ugh. Let me see. Oops. Every time they see an angry black woman come in. They have the monopoly over here, which is really, you know, upsetting. Huh? Then you disappear. Yeah. Says my internet is unstable. Because I have, my phone is from Xfinity, too. Wow. Mm, uh, can they hear us? I think so. Let me see. Can you guys hear us? And they were going to Burger King or whatever, and they had a couple of people that came almost corrected up, which I kind of thought my personal view of that was like that's something you do in the in the PM or the DMs. Like if I had a problem with something that you were showing or teaching, I wouldn't call you out on the post. I would like, you know, go to your little message thing and be like, okay, you know what, maybe I didn't completely agree with that or whatever, but I would never blast somebody on their post. First of all, that's their post. Second of all, that's not my place to do it publicly. What about you, Lena? Have you ever been in a situation where you had you felt that even the need to do that? Well, yeah, well, I already told you, you know, that people in my family have even been making racist comments and stuff. And 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 my son, he he did call out my aunt. And then it happened again. And and I told him, I said, look, it's don't even waste your energy. If 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 she's gonna continue posting shit like that. You know, do what you got to do. And he says, I think I need to unfriend her. And I unfriended people too. I think it comes down to that, whether whether it has to do with the racism um, and the racist remark, because I think, you know, I got to be honest, Facebook is becoming really heavy. Every time you turn it on, you have somebody trying to out somebody or do this. And I feel like justice needs to be done. But I think at a certain point, when it's like every other post, then it's like, okay, I need to go ahead and get off because I just don't want to be a part of that energy all day long. But mm, I this particular post, I think it was somebody who was showing how to do a working or something like that. And it was like two people like, that's not the way I was taught to do it. You're not doing it right. And I kept thinking, I was taught to do the work How about 
when you make a post community, somebody critiques it or I didn't hear all of what you were saying because I my internet keeps booting me out and then jumping back in. But I feel like when somebody posts something, if you and especially like if they're doing a working and 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 it's butter on a candle or whatever, then maybe it's and especially if you're in that person's group, um, it's probably better not to to outright say you're full of shit and stuff, but maybe say something like, I was taught to, or you could do it this way. I was taught how to do it this way, or don't, don't, you know what I'm saying? Because I do feel like, okay, I can do it this way the way that I was taught, but I do my cleanses where I add a lot of different stuff to it that necessarily was not taught to me by my physical elder, but my ancestors were like, well, put this in there. Right. Well, you have to do what works for you. Maybe butter works for somebody else, but doesn't... I no, butter doesn't work for anybody. Well, butter doesn't work for <laughs> just right. saying. Right. But, you know, it's one of those things where you try not to, I, you know, I try not to be judgmental and I know a lot of people go no we don't want to be judgmental but sometimes we are because we're like oh I would never do that right but I do feel like in the spiritual community a lot of times there's a lot of drama that comes out of people critiquing people or trying to call them out because they're trying to make them look less than knowledgeable first of all right and then I feel like sometimes when you have are learning, I think it's kind of like you have to figure out what your lane is and work within that lane. Like somebody was saying, I believe each is own. And that's true. I kept thinking too, if you're going to do something privately like that, or if you're going to do something, to me it's best to take it privately. I would never correct you publicly. Mm -mm. Now, I might great. side eye you. I might look at you funny. <laughs> but we gonna have the conversation privately. That's just the way I was taught, out of respect. Right. So I wondered what other people thought about that. I don't know. Um, I just think it's a respect thing myself. What, so what somebody you... was saying to each his own. Go ahead. No, 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 I was just repeating the message that I see. Are you seeing comments at your end? Um, mm -mm. but I can, last one I saw was where I'd ask about suggestions. Ah, okay. So did we give any suggestions about what they want to talk about? I haven't seen anything after that. But I keep getting booted uh, in and out. Let's talk about next week and uh, if you have a question for the G before she closes off, go ahead and ask your questions. We can cover spiritual gifts for sure next Thursday. But go ahead and ask your questions. Because I see somebody has a question. Yeah, I mean I think we're wide open, whatever you want to talk about. We've talked about all kinds of stuff. Okay, so how do you keep how do you keep continuing protection going? Okay, so here's the thing. I never stop. So continuing protection could be simply as wearing a talisman that you never take off, something that you have anointed. It could be burning a lamp. Um, I go through cases of candles, cases. I, in fact, I started even, I was going through so many cases of candles that I started making my own reversals and things like that because it ended up being just a little bit less expensive. Cleaning your house, if you have plants outdoor, protection plants, roses, rue, 
sage, things like that that you grow in your yard to protect the outside. Ammonia, wiping your, washing your floors, washing your windows. You literally have to start making it a, um, a part of your cleaning ritual because really it is a ritual. So if you're talking about continuous protection, I would say jewelry, earrings, necklaces, rings, bracelets that you keep on, that you do not take off, and also making it a part of your cleaning regimen. What do you What do you feel, Lena? Well, you know, I use that salt and egg thing too. You know, I always True. always keep that there. I one thing I did want to comment on what you were saying is that. When you're doing this cleaning, like you say, cleaning your house and, and doing your windows and your doors and all that kind of stuff, make sure that you do it a, a schedule and be regular about it. So if you're going to, you know, take a cleansing bath, do it once a week, every week. If you're going to clean your yeah. house, all your doorways and do your windows and your above your doors and things like that and you're going to do it every week, make sure you do it every week. Be consistent. Yeah. I think the issue with people is a lot of people only cleanse and do protection when they feel like they're, they're being hit. Right. But you, you have to understand there are levels to this. You can get somebody who is a lower level practitioner that they're, they're hitting you, they're throwing at you, but you don't feel it because maybe your protections are really, really good. So you could do the minimum. Say you just happen to do a cleansing bath and you say your prayers and you light a candle. That's, that, that may be enough. But you're going to have some workers that are going to be a higher level. And those are the ones that literally can bring in sickness, cause... Um, car accidents, um, you know, your house to burn down, things like that. So when you're dealing with higher level practitioners, you have to make sure that your ritual for protection becomes a routine. You right. do it constantly because the moment that you drop your guard down is the moment they're waiting for so they can get you. And so going along with that, you should go ahead and clean your house and, 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 wash down your windows with ammonia and put the mirrors in the windows and the cross and the oil above the doorways. And you should already be doing that so that, because you, they don't have, you don't make an appointment to get hit. You don't know when it, you don't. So if you're all you half the time, you don't, you don't even have a problem with a person to get hit. Right. I mean, and it is the same for your car and your job. Somebody, was saying i think it's nancy too nancy so for your yeah if you travel a lot for work you need to anoint your car with protection oil there's things that you can hang on your rear view mirror that um for that shit mama star got a whole uh i'm surprised her rear view mirror is still uh hanging on by the thing but what? she has like crosses and people that were putting cds in um because they were reflective so if the car took a hit, the reflectiveness of the CD in your on your windshield or your rearview mirror hanging down would reflect back, you know, the hit. You know, right. so there's yeah, there's a lot of different ways you could do it. And you could put mojo bags underneath the seat of your car and all kinds of stuff, you know. Put put one in the glove box, you know. If if you're in a situation where you don't necessarily want people to know, then put a mojo bag under the seat. Put a mojo bag in the glove box, in the console. You don't have to have it hanging on your mirror. Remember, that's true. Remember when we went to Cold Metals, um, we did a traveling mojo. Yes. And we put, you know, the protection herbs in with the protection songs. Exactly. And you literally, it, I can't but you can Google protection songs and put these, print them out, write them out, and put them in your car, like you said, under your seat, in your glove box, uh, whatever. But I feel like you, you definitely need to protect everything, especially if you're on the road a lot. Right. Yeah. Because 
Well, my mirror fell off in the Firebird because I had too much shit hanging on it. Well, like I said, Mama Star had like a whole freaking, you know, it was heavy. Right. So, I mean, of course, like Lena said, if you have other people that are riding in the car with you, you, you might not want to put devils and angels and it depends mm -hmm. on how open. I mean, I wouldn't give a shit. You in my car, you just get whatever I got hanging up in there. Right. But you know, if you're carpooling with people and you don't want people that at your job or clients or patients getting in your vehicle that may have problems with your religious needs, like let them sit there you know, on my seat. And he was kind of like, uh, this was under there. I don't know if you put it under there, but it happened. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I put it under there. Right. But he was, he was a little bit freaked out, just a tad <laughs> bit. Just a I tad have, bit. I have that uh, huge rosary in the truck. It's like five feet long, girl. It's huge. Well, you've seen it. You've been in the truck. Yeah, I got it wrapped uh, around like three times. An angel and a devil and a whole bunch of other stuff just all clustered together. So, I mean, really. Okay, now let you me know, you, When it comes to protection, you got to do what you got to do. Well, you read Go ahead, playing, Lena. you read playing cards. So what playing card would be for protection? Oh wow. I mean you can use I would probably use to deflect Ten of Pentacles, which is a positive card, Ten of Clubs, which would be a travel card for me. Um which is to make sure that you get to your destination. Uh, Ace of Wands is something that is, I use it as new beginning or a travel card too. So, I mean, literally you can assign a meaning to the card. Mm -hmm. You can either go off of what, cause I mean, there's several different meanings or you can literally set your intent with that card. But I would say probably 10 of clubs, Ten of Pentacles, um, the Sun card, if you were going to have an old tarot deck, Will of Fortune. Um, oh, right into the card, they into the card, they're going to ride. That's what I think, too. Yeah, because I was thinking. So let's see. Any other questions? Underneath the you seat, it. you know how underneath the seat you have those wires that kind of go like this, like a S. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, one love spell you can do is uh, uh, two of hearts, and you could slip it under the person's driver's seat of their vehicle. Well, why can't you do that with like protection? You can put the ten of clubs yeah, under your you seat could. in those wires, and that's another you way. You could that absolutely do it. Like you said, you could even put it in the glove box. I mean, you know, it, it, it depends. But you're right. That if way, you're trying you to hide it. Your car to get washed. You know, you don't have a problem with somebody taking your bag out of your car or whatever. Most of them wouldn't touch it, especially if they know what it is. Even if they don't know what it is, most of them wouldn't touch it. But I agree with you if you're literally trying to put it somewhere and be incognito. Even if you were doing your kid's car or your spouse car and don't believe in your belief. Are you still here? I'm here. It keeps bumping me out and in. Okay. So somebody wants to know, are we still doing gifts? Let's talk about gifts. Ask the question. What do you want to talk about? What do you want to know? About gifts? What gifts are you interested in? Jordan, did you pack some sunblock? You a black boy that could burn, babe. You need to get you some sunblock. Well, you need to wear a sunblock. It's really hot out there. You're gonna turn red. You're gonna, you're gonna you know, you, you're a light skin boy. You know, light skin. All right. 
you see it. I'm looking for a question on the side. It could be a little bit of a delay. So, I mean, some people say we want to discuss gifts. So, if you have a question, please post it and we will talk about it. Let's talk about the, the biggest gift that everybody seems to have in past. Okay. The, the gift of empathy to feel things. Um, Everybody and their grandma right now is an empath. And I'm not saying that it can't be true. You get a lot of people that are like, oh, everybody wants to be an empath. Um, being an empath is not only, um, a lot of people are like, oh, I pick, I'm, I'm sensitive to people's emotions, which is one aspect of it. Because you can be, there's a lot of different categories with it. With it. But for most people, most people, Base in impasse would be people that pick up vibrations from other people. Say I go to Linda's house and she's depressed and I'm an empath, all of a sudden I'm depressed. Mm -hmm. Because you to make anything strong, you have to practice. Anything. If you are empathetic, you're intuitive, you have to practice with it. Which means that you have to allow yourself to connect with people. Uh, meditation is one of the best way to open up all your clairs. A lot of people, especially when you work with sick people, or you work in hospitals and things like that. A lot of healers that get into those professions, they get into it because they are empathetic. Because they want to take care of people. They feel people's pain and they want to make things better. You saying I love an empath, but with this like when I'm working because of a hospice aid. So that would be a really hard situation. But I, from experience, because I've lost a lot of clients and I was there when hospice was there. A lot of hospice aides, um, choose that profession because they want to be there to help the person cross over. They want to be there to take care of the people. Most hospice aides do not get into that position because of the money at all. They're basically death doulas. Yeah. They're there to help people transition. So if you chose that career, you chose that career because you're comfortable with death and the other end of it is that you feel comfortable nurturing somebody while they make that transition. What do you think about that, Lena? I didn't hear half of what you said because I got booted. But um, I agree. I also uh -huh. think that some people get into the healthcare profession because they had something happen to them. They lost a grandparent to cancer. So they go into, oh my God, it, it just went poof. Um, oncology, you know, to do research and, and to help other people with cancer. But it, it does go back because they, you know, they feel that it's something that they feel. You can walk, I've, I've walked into a restaurant before where the owners had such bad juju that when you walked in, it was like a hot, wet blanket just hit you right in the face where you can't breathe. It's true. I yeah. think when you're truly empathetic, especially with death, you can connect to it. I know a lot of times when my clients are going to pass. Like I had one last month, and normally they'll ask me to come do the massage and help them, you know, on the physical end of it because they're hurting and their, their bodies are aching. And of course, the massage is not going to help, um, not the way that they want it to. I mean, the nurturing is going to be there, but it won't alleviate the pain because the body's breaking down. And I've had the honor, and I call it an honor, of helping seven of my clients transition. I've been there sometimes for the final rights, and a lot of times I've been the one to tell them it's okay to let go. Right. It's okay to go. And when they see that and we make eye contact, normally the next day people will go, Tanya, you know, they, they crossed over. And it's because I knew that they were ready. They just were. Yeah. Um, 
That's all what it is, right? You have to do a lot. Who was that? There was that is a part of you. Wasn't there? Go ahead, Lena. Wasn't there someone who was saying that they were a death doula? It's a lot more people that are coming out as death doulas because it used to be people didn't want to be called that. They didn't want to be associated with it. But now, I mean, especially with everything going on in, in the world, you know, you definitely, you have it there that hold a hand, that say prayers, that do rituals. They give people baths. They get them ready for their transition. And to be honest, I hope somebody does that for me. Right. I mean, I would prefer not to be caught up with morphine and just laying in the bed waiting. I would rather somebody come in there and, you know, do a, a cleansing ritual, pray with me, pray over me, and then help me cross over. Right. You not may be the one that do it, Lena. Who knows? Girl, I'm going to be right there with you holding your hand, but we'll probably go at the same time. You know, in about 40, 50 years. <laughs> it's not going to be today. Well, shoot, wait a minute. I don't I'm know. saying that. Not that's, that's a long time. Okay, so, so I've seen people suffering and I place my hand on their shoulder and ask God to transition them and it has worked. Yeah, I do the yeah. same thing. Because I'm when they're, when they're, I ask when God and their ancestors to come and Because when they're comfortable, they can, they can go. You know, they know when, they, when you're praying with them, they're yeah. like, it's it's like a release. You know, they're letting go of all this heavy weight. Now, I know Absolutely. my grand, I know my grandmother waited on my daughter. My grandma was in pain for a long, long time. She was bedridden for a year, and then. Poof! I'm back. I was trying to see how it is on Facebook if you're if we're Well, I didn't go live on Facebook. I just did the Zoom. I figured that I would record it, but I don't even know if I can get the recording to be honest. Yeah. So I sent out the email with the link to every everyone that had signed up. Yeah, Nancy says sometimes their family members hold them for transitioning. And it's true. I mean, of course, it's selfishness. It's just like uh, Nancy said, I think it's just the three of us, which is good. I mean, I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it that we can just sit and chat. Um, sometimes, you know, it's hard for a person to let go when their kids or their loved ones are there because they don't want to leave that person. But yeah. as soon as the people go out the room, I'm the main one up there talking about, you know, you can go. If you're ready, you can cross over. Yeah. I'll hold you until it happens. And sometimes they need to hear that. They need to know that they can. It's okay for them to leave. So yeah, yeah I would Google death, death doula, doula, because you you literally you will relate to it. Oh, let's see, Munchy Cheese. It took forever to find out how to get in here. Oh. <laughs> what? Are you, are you signed up on the list? So I'm not sure what was going on with Zoom. Oh. Nika. Hey, Nika. Oh, she's saying her daughter changed her name. <laughs> Munchie Cheese. Munchie Cheese. <laughs> That's so cute. That's so freaking cute, though, Munchie Cheese. That sounds about like something Taylor would do. <laughs> mm hmm. Oh. Yeah, but no, Nancy, that, you know, sometimes that's your calling. Spirit gives everybody a different calling. Not everybody is going to um, read cards and, and uh, or, you know, there's so many different aspects of gifts, and you have the gift of hands. Your, your hands hold energy. So literally, you can place hands on people, and you can help them feel better immediately and that's your gift that's the beauty of it that your empathy flows through your hands right exactly so you probably would have made an amazing massage therapist too but i mean really reggae healing and things like that that you already do that is your calling so let's see if we have any other questions
And what Nika does too, you know, really um, goes into the whole healing aspect as well, because I really picked that up when I was reading for her about her products and stuff. Mm -hmm. She's gifted, very talented, very, very talented. Now, what do you think about people? Um, well, especially now with with all the death and stuff that's around us and, and, and things going on with people, you know, that are getting sick with the empaths, do you feel like the empaths can actually feel that, that body aches and pains that are from other people and not from the virus yeah, itself? So that makes it, it's like they're not infected, but they can they they have the same symptoms because they can yeah. pick it up off, off of what people around them are feeling. I have a friend that what was it a couple of weeks ago? She kept going, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I'm suffocating, and she went and got tested for COVID, and she doesn't have it. She tested negative, right? But she's a very strong empath, and she's a really strong medium, so she can feel gunshot wounds and things like that. So yeah. I think if the person is sensitive, they can pick up a lot of things um, that happen to other people. Like I said, there's been times with my kids where, you know, one of them will have a toothache or something like that, and then I'd be laying in bed at night, and next thing you know, my tooth starts hurting because I feel the pain for them. Or like you, you get know, sometimes I even ask God, it. give it to me. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like with an impact, one hundred percent. If you, if, if, if the the more you grow it, the more you connect with it. There, it's like I can smell it before I even see it. Right. So, and I used to work in a nursing home, and it used to drive me. It's a sweet smell. It used to drive me crazy every time I would smell it. And you know what it connects to. When my grandmother died, she died in the house, she died on the couch, and that day we went in there, the whole room smelled sweet. So every time I smell that smell, I know somebody's getting ready to die. Yeah. That's what my mind connected with. Now, let's see what Munch Cheese is saying. Right. I almost took the oh, munch, therapy. Munch I'm finally it, getting to where it is. little square cheese it. Munch Cheese it. I love cheeses too. Let me quit. I'm hungry. I know that. I'm finally getting to where I'm really wanting to make products to help people spiritually. He could do it. Do it. 100%. I mean, you're at a place now where you're growing. You know, we're being called to step out a little bit in the spotlight. It doesn't mean that we all have to be on, you know, Zoom or Facebook or whatever. But in our communities, we're asked to be seen. We're asked to start putting our, our gifts out there, whether this is making products or, you know, helping people cross over. This is what we're, this is what we're called to do. Exactly. Oh, Nancy said at the beginning of her daughter's pregnancy, she had her sickness. Oh, Jasmine can keep that. Right. Jasmine can keep it. That's <laughs> one thing I'll be praying. Lord, let her go ahead and deal with that. I, ooh, I couldn't stand for her sickness. I couldn't stand it. But more than likely, if it hits her bad, I'll probably be up there throwing up with her. Ugh. Mm -hmm. I hope I have plenty of time before that happens. You know, I don't know. I'd rather take <laughs> I'd rather take the morning sickness than the labor pains. Uh, I, uh, no. <laughs> That's a tough one. That's a toss-up. That's know. a toss-up. Oh, Nancy said that she. I don't blame you. I do not blame you. I will. Yeah. No. Did you imagine Taylor going into labor and you feeling everything, Lena? Oh. Uh uh. I look. We you know after you hit forty five and you start getting kind of a little bit you know, your body starts breaking down a little bit. First time I had heartburn, I was like, oh, hell no. I done went and got myself fixed so I wouldn't have to feel this no more. Yes, yes. Y'all gonna laugh at me, but I swear, 
last year when I was going through the change and I knew that my cycle was ending, I thought I felt my eggs dying. <laughs> I was like, my eggs are dead. They, they were slowly dying and I felt so bad. I was depressed for like a week. I was like, oh my God, my eggs are going. <laughs> They're going, I can feel it. And everybody's like, be happy. Be happy. And I was like, it's just poor. It just feels horrible to me. It literally did. It felt horrible. Oh. Uh, no, I, I, uh, have, I have to put up a shield so that I don't, I don't, it, you know what I'm saying? It's almost, what do they call it in the vampire land? Turning off your humanity because I can't deal with everybody's stuff. Absolutely. Especially now. You know, I just can't. And when I'm doing readings, I have to turn it off too because if you have a message, you know, you can't always just feel sorry for somebody and not give them the message. You have to tell them. Well, you, the it's true because last week I had a client that is dying of cancer and, um, I had to give the message, which was a good message, and I, I broke down. I, it's the first time I've ever like, started bawling on a reading, and I was like, I'm so sorry. I can't do this right now. It was like a 15-minute reading, and I was like, we need so much more time to talk about this. I felt like my soul was just being snatched from me, and of course, that's nowhere near what she was feeling. Right. But it was one of those moments where I had to shut down the reading. The rest of the day, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to look at TV. I didn't want to be on social media. I just felt bad. And I wanted to feel bad. And that was it. That was it. But I think sometimes we're able to shield. And then I think sometimes spirit is like, no, you need to feel this because this person needs to, needs to know that you understand. Right. What they're going through, and that was heavy. It was heavy. I don't want to feel it again. I'm not gonna lie. It was really, really heavy. No, and it takes a lot out see, of you. See, Nancy said I, it did. It took a lot. It took a lot, and I mean, for me to want to shut down the whole rest of my day, it was just—it was horrible. It was horrible. Hey, Alyssa. So let's see, doing? Nancy. I had to learn to shield myself when we would have meetings at work. It would be draining. You have to do this with so many people that you do, family, with friends, um, co-workers. You know, even on Facebook, there's just some people that I'm like, man, I just don't want none of what they handing out. None of it. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes you just have to, you have to shut down and disconnect from people as an empath. You have to. I've done that actually with death. And I don't know if it's... I. Yeah, because it's almost like it's turned off. And I know it's going to sound so cold-hearted, but like when people die, it, it's, they died. It, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what well, to that's tell it is, It's like, I don't know what to tell you because used to, I would have like cried and cried and been in the bed and all kinds of stuff and curled up like a in a fetal position, but now it's like, okay. And and I don't, I don't think this, and I'm not trying to be cold. cold hearted. I think it's maybe something in my mind is clicked where death is not bad. It could be. I mean, I see the final. Um, and I think for some people, that's a coping mechanism too. That some people that you know they have to have that barrier up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember going to a funeral where a client lost his son. His son was shot in a robbery, and I walk in, and my client literally he ran in my arm. Here's this forty-year-old man, and he's just bawling, and I'm I'm holding him up, and I'm and I'm petting him on, on his back, and I'm thinking, Kel is not gone. He's, you know, he, I know he's not here, but he's not gone. And so, you know, they asked me, how are you not crying? How are you not falling apart? And it was because I, I just knew that Kill was going to reach back out to him. 
right. but that's really hard sometimes if you don't if you don't believe in an afterlife if yeah, you don't believe in not, it you, if it's you, final, i mean you know you know they're they're not gone number one and and they're they're not hurting they're okay you know they're okay you know, but Nancy's right. It's hard to explain it to people if they don't believe in it, if they don't understand it. Right. And that's what I meant by I might come off, off across as being cold hearted at times, but it's like, I don't know what to say. So honestly, I just don't say anything. You know? Well, I think I, or everybody I does differently. They do. You, you have to understand it. I mess with my mom all the time. I'm like, mom. When your time comes, I'm going to have to put you on a separate ancestor altar because you, you, she won't get along with anybody. And I know this, so I'm trying to get her to understand now I need you to go on the other side and at least act right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when she, when she, when she, when she, stop trying to make me die. And I'm like, I'm just trying to prepare you that when we start working together on the other side, I need you to act a little bit more decent than what you act now. Right. And they look at me like, like well, you know, like something's wrong with me. Like you're, you're fucked up in the head. So, especially my mom, you're fucked up. Something's wrong with you. But I already know the issue that we're going to have when she crosses over. And it's hard to, it's hard to explain that to people. It really is without coming off like you batshit crazy. You gonna be sleeping at night and you are gonna feel somebody come in there and flick your ear. <laughs> well, I already told her, don't you come fucking with my fingers and my toes now. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. That's what I'm saying. I'm telling her already. You look, look act right. Act right. I'm take care of you, but you gotta act right. But I think it's one of those things as a sense, especially now with COVID-19, and we got so many different deaths. Hmm. I don't know if she froze or I froze. Can you guys still hear her? Yeah, it keeps kicking me off too. Okay, you can only hear me. Yeah, she looks frozen. Our internet's been down for seven hours now. So. Oops, now it's just me. I hope she comes back on. But yeah, I mean, I don't try to be cold hearted, but it's like, that's what I mean. I don't know if it's like my, you know, once you get so old, all your people start dying and it's just like, okay, what happened? You know, I don't, I don't try to be cold hearted, but at the same time, I'm not trying to take on other people's drama as I put it. You know, other people getting upset will get me upset. And, I, you know, I deal with it in my own way. I don't know if this... She's got the same internet that I do. I'm using my phone as a hotspot, though. You almost have to be, because if you... If you take on everybody else's energy who's upset and crying and it just it becomes overwhelming i understand and that's okay you know everybody's an individual everybody deals with it differently let me see oh she's Oh, she's saying um, that she got kicked. You see.
Okay, so she got kicked out. So I think what we're gonna do is, let me see what she, if she's. Oh, her Xfinity is completely out. So we're gonna go ahead and close out and we're gonna be back next week. So watch your email so you get the link and, and you know, share the post, let other people know so we can get more people in here. Um, because I'll be honest, we don't ever plan anything. We just come on here and we're like, okay, what are we gonna talk about? I don't know, what do you wanna talk about? I don't know, has anybody got any questions? So get some people in here. And I mean, we love having, you know, a little bit of people, but you know, other people need to hear the messages as well. And I will chat and see if I can make a video out of this. I don't know because it got kicked like a 50 million times. Um, oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. I didn't see her. Um, I've only seen you guys in here um, this evening. She may have signed up after the email went out as well too. I haven't checked to see. But yeah, if y'all can do that, that would be awesome. Um, just let people know they can go to www.conjurecrew.com. Um, when my internet comes back up and I'm not running off of a hotspot, I'm going to actually change that page so that I'm going to put Tanya's booking information and, and Venmo and Cash App and all that stuff on there too. Oh. Yes, tell her, Nancy, that she definitely needs to come next week. We'll, we'll be back next Thursday as well. God help us that the internet's working. I don't know. I was so confused. I was like, you know what? They done hacked, um, and I hear me going into my little thing. They done hacked Apple, Barack Obama, Elon Musk, all those people yesterday on Twitter, they hacked their accounts and now they're hacking Xfinity. I don't know what the hell is going on. But anyway, next week's gonna be better. So like I was saying, make sure you check your email. I'll try to get it out faster. Um, and I'm gonna add her stuff as soon as my internet comes back up and I'm not on a hot spot. So that way, anything you need, you can go to one page and we'll be there for you always. Okay guys. Love you bunches. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.